Are you thinking about planning a trek to Nepal? Or maybe you're dreaming about hiking up to Everest Base Camp and have no idea what to pack. In this video, I'm gonna show you everything I packed for my recent trek up to Everest Base Camp. Before we get started, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button and bell to get notified anytime I upload a new video about backpacking, backpacking food, and tips about planning your next backpacking trip. Hey everyone, my name is Kathleen, former PCT through hiker, avid Pacific Northwest day hiker, solo long distance backpacker, and the hungry hiker here on YouTube. YouTube. In September 2022, I left the United States to hike up to Everest Base Camp in Nepal. For two weeks, my friends and I took in all of the beautiful scenery up in the Himalayas, indulged in all of the local delicious cuisine, hiked up to the highest elevation I've ever been at in my entire life, saw lots of wildlife, and met tons of incredible people along our trek. If you haven't checked out all of the videos from our EBC trek, I'll include a link here where you can watch all of the videos from our amazing trip. Be sure to stick around to the end of this video because I'm going to answer some of your most asked questions about how to plan your own Everest Base Camp trek. So here's my Everest Base Camp packing list, starting with my pack, or should I say my packs. For my travel pack, I used the Gossamer Gear Mariposa 60. My original idea was that I was going to carry on my bag. Starting with my first flight from Seattle to Chicago, the flight was absolutely full. I was one of the last people on the flight and there was no more room in the overhead space bin, so I had to check my bag, and I was devastated. I tried to explain to the flight attendant that I was traveling from Seattle all the way to Nepal, and that I absolutely could not have anything happen to this bag. She assured me that she would gate check it, and that it would make it on the flight no problem, and that nothing would happen to it. And she was right. It was waiting for me as soon as I got off the plane in Chicago. Our next flight is our 14 hour flight from Chicago to Doha, Qatar, and I thought for sure, I would be able to carry on my pack. When we checked in for this flight, they said that my bag was too big. Now this pack isn't really that big, but I guess the overhead bins just wasn't big enough for a pack like this. So they made me check the bag, which again, I was completely devastated. Like if anything were to happen to this bag, if it were to get lost, my trek is over. It's all my gear is in there. So I reluctantly checked the bag and I didn't have anything to put the bag in. I just had to check the bag in as is and hope for the best. Luckily, by the time we got to Kathmandu, everything was fine. My bag showed up and it was not damaged. All my gear was in there. It was great. The bag that I actually used on the trek was my Osprey Tempest 20. This is my day pack and I love this pack. It's the perfect size for bringing all of the gear I need without having extra room to overpack things I might not need. For the trek, we didn't have to carry all of our overnight stuff because we had three amazing Sherpas. We had Min, Bhupal, and Suman who carried our overnight double for us to each of the tea houses. So all we had to carry with us on the trek was our day pack with everything that we would need throughout the day. Thankfully, I had my pack cover for my Tempest 20 because the first day out of Lekla going up to Namche Bazaar, it rained on us. Luckily, it was the only day that rained on us for our entire trek, but I was really happy that I had my pack rain cover. The other bag I used for our trek was our Life Himalaya Trekking Duffel Bag, and this is a bag that was actually given to us by our trekking company. So this was the bag that they wanted us to put all of our items that we would need for overnight when staying at each of the tea houses, things that we didn't want to carry with us throughout the trek. I also used this duffel bag to put all of my stuff in and check this bag for my flights home. So moving on to clothing. For clothing, I actually have three different sections for clothing. I have my hiking outfit, warm layers, and my travel town outfit. So starting with my hiking outfit, I had my Outdoor Research Echo Sun hoodie, which I absolutely love. I've worn that on all of my backpacking trips. I love that it's long sleeve, so it protects my skin from the sun. It's thin enough that I can sweat in it. It's warm enough. I can use it as a layer underneath my other layers, and it has a really big hood that I can put over my trekker hat. Love the sun hoodie. In addition to my sun hoodie, I also wore a pair of Athleta running shorts. And this is my preferred hiking uniform, if you will. I did buy a pair of trekking pants in Kathmandu. I originally started the hike with the trekking pants on. The weather was a little overcast and it even started to rain. But as we started to really start hiking, the trail also had a fair amount of incline. We did some pretty big climbs up to Namche Bazaar and 
I just started sweating a lot. I'm, I'm a sweater, I'm a sweaty hiker, and I just really felt uncomfortable in the trekking pants. So the first chance I got, I quickly got off trail, switched back my shorts on, and I was so much happier. If you know that you're comfortable wearing a sun hoodie and shorts, and everyone else is wearing pants, wear your shorts. What else did I bring? I brought five pairs of underwear for this trek, and I brought two sports bras and three extra pairs of socks. And I feel like that was the perfect amount for this trek. I also wore my trekker hat, which I wear for all of my hikes. It just keeps my hair out of my face. It also keeps the sun off my face. I also brought a buff, but when we were in Kathmandu, I bought a Everest Base Camp trekking buff, which has the map of the Everest Base Camp trek. So I brought that with me on the trek. I also had my sunglasses, my Sunbum classic fanny pack which I absolutely love. I will not do a hike without my Summit Bum fanny pack. Anything I need easy access to and don't want to have to take off my pack to get, I put it in my fanny pack and I love that thing. Plus it's purple which is really awesome. For my shoes for this trip, I wore a brand new pair of the Solomon Owl Pulses. And thank you so much, Solomon, for sending me these shoes over the summer. Originally, I was gonna save these shoes for the shoulder season and the winter hiking season here in the Pacific Northwest, but the Solomons that I had been wearing all summer long finally gave out on me. I mean, I put a number of miles on these shoes and I absolutely love them, but I just love them to death and I wasn't gonna be able to bring them with me to Nepal. I had a new pair of these Solomon Solomon Owl Pulses in my closet and I wore them right out of the box and they were super comfy. They were awesome. They were perfect. They are a trail runner but a high top so there's a lot of ankle support. They're also Gore-Tex and they kept my feet nice and warm up at the higher elevations. So these shoes were actually perfect for this trek and I really love that purple color. Moving on to my warm layers for my clothing. So I brought my Enlightened Equipment Women's Torrid Jacket. Love that jacket. It's a really nice, comfortable, puffy jacket. Super warm. I was a little worried it might not be warm enough at the higher elevation, but it was perfect. I also had my Melanzana Microgrid dress, which that thing comes with me on every trip I go on. I wear it off trail, I wear it on trail, and that is what I put on when I get to camp. It was the dress that I put on as soon as I got to our tea houses. That thing goes with me everywhere I go. I also brought a vest. So I have a Solomon Drifter vest and I ended up not wearing that. I thought that I might need it for a little bit more warmth at the higher elevations, but my fleece was warm enough with my puffy, so I didn't actually wear the vest at all. I also brought a pair of Athleta leggings. I always bring a pair of leggings with me just as a warm layer in case it gets really cold and I'm really glad I brought these leggings because as soon as we got over 15,000 feet, it got really cold. So I switched from my shorts to my leggings and I ended up wearing the leggings for the rest of the trek. I also brought my beanie and I wore that when we were in the tea houses at night because it got pretty cold. I also brought a pair of liner gloves. I, I love a pair of liner gloves. You know, my fingers tend to get really, really cold, especially in the early morning. And I was really worried that the liner gloves might not be warm enough. And so I bought a slightly thicker pair of gloves in Kathmandu and I ended up not using those. The liner gloves were perfect. Moving on to my travel town outfit. Clothing, you have to be really careful because a lot of times you can easily overpack clothing for any trip you go on. So I wanted to make sure for my travel town outfit that I kept it real simple. For my travel town outfit, I had a pair of Athleta joggers, Athleta tank top, a pair of black shorts, and then also my Tiva sandals, which I also used as my camp shoes or shoes to change in when we're in the tea house. And that was perfect. Only thing I would change is maybe having one or two more shirts, which was fine because I actually did a little bit of souvenir shopping in Kathmandu and got a couple t-shirts. When we came back from Lukla, our hotel offered laundry service, so we were able to get all of our clothes washed and have clean clothes for the last two days we were in Nepal. If you like this video, make sure and hit the like button, give it a thumbs up right now. Moving on to rain gear. I brought my Enlightened Equipment Visp rain jacket, which I am so in love with that rain jacket. It is really thin, it keeps you really dry, and you can layer underneath it. And I also like the length of it, it actually covers my butt. It also has pit zips, and I was able to still be a super sweaty hiker while still staying nice and dry underneath. I also brought my Outdoor Research Cascadia 
Gore-Tex Gators. When I took a look at the forecast before we left Kathmandu, it didn't look like there was going to be a lot of rain, so I left my gators in Kathmandu, and I was pretty happy with it because I ended up not needing them at all for this entire trek. And I also brought my Enlightened Equipment rain wrap. I ended up not using the rain wrap, which is totally fine because it weighs next to nothing. Okay, sleep system. So for the Everest Base Camp trek, we didn't need to bring a shelter system. We weren't sleeping in tents because we were staying in tea houses along the way. But we did need to bring sleeping bags. Through our trekking company, we had the option of borrowing a sleeping bag, but I actually brought my own quilt. So I have the Enlightened Equipment Custom Enigma quilt, which is probably one of my all-time favorite pieces of gear, not just because it's purple, but because it's super warm and super comfy, and that thing has gone with me on every backpacking trip I've done over the last two years. I brought it with me on this trek, and I was worried because it was a quilt that it might not be warm enough, so just in case, as a backup, I did borrow a sleeping bag from our trekking company and I ended up not using the sleeping bag at all. My quilt was plenty warm. And also, every tea house we stayed in, they provided a comforter as well. So I would lay out my quilt and then I would put the comforter over the quilt. And most of the time, I ended up sleeping in just a tank top and shorts. Like I was super warm. My quilt was plenty warm and I was so happy with it. I also brought my Enlightened Equipment Sidekick Booties because my feet tend to get really cold and I was really happy I had those. For my sleep system, I also brought my camping pillow as well as my sleeping bag liner and I ended up not using either one of those. I did bring a pair of Darn Tough Hiker Micro Crew Cushion Sleep Socks, which I did wear a couple of nights that were really, really cold. And I wore those with my booties and my feet stayed nice and warm. For sleeping clothes, I did have a long sleeve base layer as well as a pair of fleece lined leggings. But I ended up getting super warm on most nights and then just stripping down to a tank top and shorts. I was pretty warm even up at the higher elevations. And then of course, I travel with my quilt in my seat a Summit Evac 13 liter dry sack to keep everything dry just in case my bag gets wet and I was really happy with that. Water filtration system. So I ended up leaving most of my water filtration system back in Kathmandu. Originally for my water filtration system I had a 32 ounce Nalgene bottle and I borrowed a SteriPid water purifier from a friend of mine and then I also brought a smaller bottle. It was actually a Gatorade bottle to mix my electrolytes and my powdered smoothies in. Once we got to Nepal we ended up drinking bottled water everywhere we went. And it was the same thing along the trek. Every time we'd stop, we would always get bottled water. After talking to our guide Prakesh before we got on the trail, he told me that I wouldn't even need the SteriPen. So I decided to leave that in Kathmandu. And I was really happy that I did because I would have never used it. Repair tool toiletry kit. Thankfully, I didn't have any gear repairs that I needed to make along the trek. So I ended up not using most of the things in my repair tool toiletry kit. I did leave my shampoo and conditioner in Kathmandu. I did bring my toothpaste and my toothbrush. There wasn't really a whole lot of options to take a shower along our trek. We were able to take warm showers on the first two nights of the trek and then for the rest of the trek we just didn't have the opportunity to take any showers. I did bring a really light microfiber towel that I got from REI and I ended up having to use that for the second shower on the trek because they didn't provide towels so I was very happy that I brought that. But then I didn't use it for the rest of the trek. Poop kit. This is essential really for any trip that you go on. I always bring my poop kit with me on every backpacking trip so this was no exception. I did take my trowel out because along the way there were plenty of tea houses where we were able to use the restroom if we needed to go to the bathroom. In my poop kit, I, I used everything else. One of the things you want to make sure and pack for an Everest Base Camp trek is toilet paper. I actually prefer baby wipes, but you can bring baby wipes, you can bring toilet paper, you can bring outdoor wipes. Whatever you bring though, you cannot flush anything down the toilet, so you have to put it in the garbage. So I made sure I kept my doggy bags in my poop kit and would wrap my baby wipes in the doggy bags and then put that in the trash. No flushing any paper products down the toilet in Nepal. Make sure and bring plenty of hand sanitizer. I feel like through hiking and backpacking has really helped me prepare 
prepare for this trip because I'm so used to having to dig a cat hole when having to go to the bathroom. So the fact that there was already a hole in the ground that I didn't have to dig was really luxurious. First aid kit. This is another part of my gear that I thankfully didn't have to use most of, but I always bring a first aid kit with me no matter what. I did scale back my first aid kit a bit because I knew that our guide Prakash would be carrying a first aid kit for all of us. So in my first aid kit, I had my blister repair kit in case I got any blisters as well as any medications I might need along the way. I did have a prescription for Diamox, which I started using the day before our trek and Diamox helps with any sort of altitude sickness, whether it's preventative or if you get symptoms of altitude sickness. And just to be on the safe side, I decided to take one pill in the morning and then one at night as a preventative measure. So that way I didn't get altitude sickness and I was very successful. I actually didn't get any sort of altitude sickness whatsoever. I also was super happy that I bought cough drops. I've been doing some research on what to bring for Everest Base Camp and someone had mentioned bringing cough drops. Once we got up at the higher elevation, like my throat just got really dry and I caught a little bit of a cough. And so the cough drops just really made my throat feel so much better and they taste really good. So I was really happy that I had them. Also before I left for my trek, I started taking a shelf stable probiotic thanks to advice from a friend who had done a lot of international travel. And I also brought these probiotics with me and took them every morning along our trek. In addition to probiotics, I also had my Kinko smoothies that I drank one of each morning. And I also drank electrolytes. In my electronics, I had my Crave Less Pro external power bank. It was plenty of power to keep all of my electronics charged throughout our entire trek. For the first two nights on our trek, we were able to plug in our electronics into the wall and actually charge them. But the farther we got up the trek, we had to rely on our power banks. I made sure to sleep with all my electronics so they didn't freeze at night, which would cause electronics to drain their battery. I was able to keep everything I needed charged charged. So I had my Garmin inReach and I also had my iPhone, which I kept on airplane mode as well as low battery mode, just so that I didn't drain my battery throughout the day. I also had my GoPro and instead of charging my batteries each night, I brought six batteries for my GoPro and I was really happy I did that because I didn't have to worry about charging any of my batteries. They were all just already charged and ready to go and then when I went back to Kathmandu, then I was able to recharge all of my batteries. I was on the fence about bringing my Garmin inReach and then I decided to bring it because I thought it'd be really fun for my friends and family to be able to follow along on our trek. And I'm really glad I brought it because all of my friends who I was on the trek with, their friends and family were also able to follow along our trek and, and see where we were at. So that was super fun to have. I did have my headlamp and I actually ended up using it. It was the first time I used my headlamp all summer and that's just because we did a couple early morning or night hikes where we needed a headlamp. Also having a headlamp was really helpful when having to use the restroom in the tea houses at the higher elevations because the higher we went, the less likely we were to have a actual toilet in our room. So we would have to go outside of the tea house for the toilet and a headlamp was definitely required for that. And because we were traveling internationally, I was super happy that I had the European travel plug adapter. That was key in Nepal. I was so happy I had that. I loved having my GoPro. I shot all of my video footage on my GoPro Hero 10 and it also has a little selfie stick and it was perfect. It was super light and I was able to keep that in my fanny pack and I felt like I shot more video because my camera was so easily available and so light that I was just more willing to use it more often. So there were only a couple of things that I brought with me on this trip that I ended up not using at all. One of them was a pack of playing cards. I just didn't use them. I thought we would have more downtime and we ended up not really having a whole lot of downtime. We were either trekking or walking throughout Kathmandu. And the one time we actually did play cards, Prakash had a pack of cards, so I didn't need to bring my cards at all. I also brought a book and this was just a last minute, like I threw it in. I thought, well, maybe I'm gonna wanna read a book on the airplane and I was so, amped up for this trip that I ended up not reading any of my book. I watched a lot of movies on the plane. I was just constantly in the moment of our trip and I just didn't have time to read a book. So I know a lot of you are going to want to know, well, what was my base weight? So if you look on my lighterpack.com list and you look at the top, it'll actually break down 
the entire weight of all of my gear by category. Now, when traveling to Lukla, we actually had a weight requirement that we had to meet. Our day pack could only be up to five kilograms and our overnight duffel bag could only be up to 10 kilograms. And we were able to weigh both our day pack and our overnight duffel at our hotel just to make sure that we were under that weight. My day pack weighed four kilograms and then my overnight duffel bag was eight kilograms. The reason why there's a weight limit for both your day pack and your overnight duffel is the plane to look but is extremely small and so weight becomes an issue. Okay, so now moving on to some of the most asked questions you guys have asked me about planning a trek to Everest Base Camp. So the first question is, when did we go to Nepal? Our trip to Nepal was a total of 14 days or two weeks. We flew out of Chicago here in the United States on Thursday, September 15th, and then we flew back to Chicago here in the United States on Wednesday, September 28th. For our trip, we added an additional two days on the front end, and we added an additional two days on the back end of our trip. And that was so we had a buffer for if we got delayed in travel, whether we were delayed in travel getting to Nepal or getting delayed in travel coming out of Lukla, getting back to Kathmandu. Luckily, our flights were all on time and we got to Nepal with no problem. So we had a full two days in Kathmandu to really acclimate to a brand new culture and brand new country. and settle in and get used to the time difference. And then on the back end, even though it got a little dramatic with trying to get back to Kathmandu, but we were all able to make it back to Kathmandu on the day that we were planning to get back from Lukla. And so we still had a full two days to spend in Kathmandu, just exploring the city and seeing all the sites. Now our actual EBC trek was a total of six days. Day one, we started in Kathmandu and flew to Lukla and then ended the day in Namche Bazaar. And that was a big day. Getting to Lukla was an adventure in itself. And then once we got to Lukla, we still had 11.8 miles to hike up to Namche Bazaar. On day two, we started off in Namche Bazaar and then hiked up to Debouche. There was a total of seven miles for that day. Now on day three, we went from Debouche to Dingboche, which is a total of eight miles. On day four, we went from Dingboche to Loboche, and that was a total of six miles. Then on our final day of the trek, day five, that was probably the biggest day. Not in terms of miles, it was only eight miles, so we started from Loboche, but we hiked all the way to Everest Base Camp and then came back down to Gorkashi. From Gorkashi to Everest Base Camp, it's only a mile and a half or two miles, but because it's at such a high elevation, it's just such a hard trek, and it's all exposed. And then the next morning, we made the trek back to Kathmandu. So we started at Gorkha Sheep. We actually woke up at like 4.30 in the morning and did an early morning hike, which ended up being socked in with fog. So we didn't go all the way to the top of our hike. And then we came back down to Gorkha Sheep and then took the helicopter eventually to Lukla. From Lukla, we were going to take another flight to Kathmandu and the weather was crappy. The, the airport had closed, but Prakash was super awesome and was able to coordinate helicopter rides for all of us back to Kathmandu. Another question I get all the time is, when's a good time of year to go and do the Everest Space Camp trek? So we did our trek in mid-September and that's really the tail end of the monsoon season. The high season for the Everest Space Camp trek is either October through December or March through May. Did you use a trekking company? And yes, we did use a trekking company. We used Life Himalaya Trekking and they were awesome. We had a wonderful guide, his name was Prakash, and we had Min, Bhupal, and Suman and then all of us six girls and together we were an amazing trail family. We had so much fun together. What's the difference between going with a trekking company versus trying to do the trek on your own? Honestly, I couldn't imagine doing this trek without our trekking company. They just made the whole trip planning process so easy. In our actual trek, we had things included like private airport pickup and drop off. Our trekking company took care of all of the national park fees along our trek. They included hotel accommodations in Kathmandu, also included all of the tea house accommodations along our trek. And then with the tea houses, all of our meals were covered. So breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And really the only thing we had to cover was any souvenirs we wanted to buy, any snacks or extra beverages. Life Himalaya Trekking also took care of all of the travel coordination, which was huge. So getting to Lukla, like I said, it is an adventure in itself and Prakash took care of 
checking us in for our flight, making sure we were able to get on our flight, and then on the back end, coming back to Kathmandu, when the airport closed and a lot of people were stranded in the airport, he was able to coordinate getting all of us on helicopter back to Kathmandu. I don't think I could have figured that out or had the mental capacity to figure that out had I been left on my own. So it was really super thankful for our trekking company to really take care of that and really take care of us. Another really nice thing about going with a trekking company is you have a guide and the guide knows the area, knows the culture, is able to answer any questions you have, point out all the different sites. If anything happens, your guide has got your back. Prakash was there with us the entire time. He reminded us to go slow, slow, slow. And it really made a huge difference. And we were all completely successful and super happy with the entire trek. Also, Life Himalaya Trekking provided some gear for us, extra coats if anybody needed, like a super big puff coat, sleeping bags. They also gifted us all trekking poles for our trip, which was really awesome. And our overnight duffel bags, which I used on our flight back home to put all of my stuff in. And we got Life Himalaya trekking t-shirts, which I thought was pretty cool. The only thing we really had to coordinate was our flights getting to and from Nepal. Once we flew into Nepal, we did have to get our visa before getting through the airport, but it was only $30. It was a super easy process. It was really straightforward. So our trek did not include travel insurance. Insurance. I did get travel insurance through World Nomads, which was an extra $77. International airfare, so that was an extra expense. Any beverages, snacks, or personal expenses. Along the trek, you can pay for a battery charge, hot showers, internet, or international phone calls, which I didn't need any of those things. I had a battery pack that was able to charge all my electronics for our entire trek. I was able to take two showers on the first two nights of our trek, and then I was fine not taking showers for the rest of the trek until we got back to Kathmandu and I didn't need to make any international phone calls while we were on our trek. One of the most asked questions I get is, well, how much did your trek cost? So our total trek cost $2,100, but this also included an extra helicopter ride that we took from Lukla to Kathmandu. Originally, our plan was to take the plane from Kathmandu to Lukla, which we did, and then on the way out, we took two helicopters from Gorkashib to get back to Lukla, and then we were gonna hop on the plane out of Lukla to get back to Kathmandu. Unfortunately, there was bad weather, there was zero visibility, so the Lukla airport ended up closing, which meant that there were no flights going in or out of Lukla. So a lot of people are getting stranded at the airport, but our guide Prakash was amazing, and he was able to coordinate helicopter rides for us from Lukla to Kathmandu. And it did come with an extra charge, but it was so worth it because we were not stranded in Lukla. We were able to get back to Kathmandu the same day that we had originally planned on. That was an extra cost into our trek which made it a total of $2,100 and it was worth every penny in my honest opinion. Another question I get asked was what was the total cost for our entire trip? We were in Nepal for a total of two weeks or 14 days and the total amount that I paid that included everything was $5,446.35. So a breakdown on that. So I had three flights. So I had a flight from Seattle to Chicago, Chicago to Doha, Qatar and then from Doha, Qatar to Kathmandu and then the three flights back home. Flights were a total of $1,674. I did upgrade to business class on my way home from Kathmandu to Doha, Qatar. So that was an additional $292, which I was so happy I did that. It was amazing. It was my first time in business class and it was amazing. Hotel accommodations. Our trekking company did take care of our hotel accommodations coming into Kathmandu, but because we had extra travel days built into our itinerary, both on the front end and the back end, we did have to take care of our hotel accommodations on the last couple days in Kathmandu. We also had a pretty long layover in Doha, Qatar. We all shared a hotel room during both of our layovers. So our hotel accommodations came out to $575.35. That also also includes for me I did get a massage that I put on my hotel room I did get some extra food and I did opt in for the laundry service at our hotel once we got back to Kathmandu. Our actual EBC trek was $2,100, which includes that extra helicopter ride back from Lukla to Kathmandu. Tipping was $500, so that was for our guide as well as our three porters. Also, all of our rides to and from the airport as well as our helicopter pilots. Each time we rode in the helicopter, I made sure to tip our pilot and they were 
so extremely happy. And then miscellaneous travel expenses. So this was all my spending money, my souvenirs. So that came to a total of $3,446.35. And honestly, for an international trek for two weeks, you could probably do it cheaper. I didn't feel like I overspent on anything and the things that I did spend a little bit more on, I was really happy I did. Why should I consider trekking in Nepal? Have you watched any of my videos featuring my Everest Base Camp trek? If not, click this link to view all of the videos featuring our entire EBC trek. These videos will show you exactly why you should consider trekking in Nepal. The incredible, beautiful scenery, the rich culture and history, delicious food, all of the wildlife, friendly people, and honestly, it's not too terribly expensive to travel there. The country of Nepal is absolutely amazing. It's some of the most beautiful, stunning scenery I've ever seen in my entire life, and the people are amazing, and the food was so delicious. Before we even left Kathmandu to hop on the plane to go home, I was already dreaming about returning back to Nepal for another trek. So yes, I think you should absolutely consider a trek in Nepal. You will not regret it and it will absolutely change your life. Need help packing for your next overnight backpacking trip? Not sure what gear to pack? Download my free backpacking gear packing list to help you get organized for your next backpacking trip. Find the link in the video description below. If you like this video and got some value out of it, hit the like button and give it a thumbs up. This type of feedback really helps me understand the types of videos you guys like and the videos you want to see me make more of. Also, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel because this really helps to support me. Be sure to check out my seven part Hiking the Everest Base Camp Trek video series featuring our entire Everest Base Camp Trek. Click the video link here to watch the entire video series or you can click the link in the video description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Happy trails and keep on trekking.